or something they promote since why didn't manage to get into the, the circuit squares. Okay. Um, next one, white to move, is it a draw? So you basically got 50-50 decision here, either to go knight f2 or to knight g3 to stop the pawn promoting. Only one of those moves is a draw. So have a think, see if you can um, come up with the correct solution. Yeah, don't guess, because I think that will cost you half I yeah, guess guessing is no good. Knowledge is uh, is power, right? You've got you to you gotta know for sure which is the right move. Now, this is also not just relevant in terms of trying to be the, the weaker side and defend. It's also, this is useful information if you end up being the stronger side in these situations. Because if you know, like, uh, understand which is um, the right the right way for white and they make the wrong move, then you should also know how to then win with, with, with black. <clears throat> okay, we've got an answer from Ryan. Can give them a bit more time, but I suppose the fact that they haven't answered means they don't know this position or trying to work it out. It's 50 50, Sarah. Just flip a coin. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that in my games. You have to. You're getting low on time and he's got to make a decision. He's got to, he's got to go for Power it. I do know? sometimes. I'm not going to That's what you've got to do. You're not sure. You just got to, you got to I guess you have make to. Make the guess. move confidently. Yeah. Make the move and then go drop. And really put your hand right in his face and just say, really confidently. You know, but okay. Must be a draw then. All right. Dylan has got the right idea and he's even given a little explanation there so that's good to see um all right so let's let's have a look then so yeah basically got two choices and we have to understand which one is is the better move so it turns out that actually knight to f2 is the only move that is drawn because you create kind of this like barrier which makes it harder for the king to approach the knight right the knight controls already these squares and it also technically controls um, like this square as well, because if the, knight, if the king comes closer, then like g4 check would win the uh, the pawn. And so this means that the king is kind of having a hard time trying to, to get closer. Even this square is kind of defended because of king e5, we still have knight g4 check. And so it's very difficult for the king to get, uh, to approach closer to the knights. He has to go like king c3, king d2, king e2. And that gives our king some time to come and help uh, our knight out. Right? If you go knight to g3, this is now losing because the black king can go to e5. This is a very important idea. And it's called uh, like shouldering the enemy king. A lot of people will just want to run directly towards the knight, um, but this is not so good because you know, one reason is you know, there's a fork on an f1, but the reason is you allow the king more of a direct route straight over to help the knight out. So king e5 is a clever idea, getting toward closer to the knight, but also making sure the king can't really get uh, as close as he would like. So king has to settle for c6, king to f4, knight to h1, uh, king to f3, king to d5, king to g2, king to e4, king takes h1. Okay. Now, if you have a good knowledge of your pawn end games and the uh, key square rule, so key square rule just tells us where the king would need to be in order for uh, the pawn to have guaranteed promotion. Um, for rook pawn, you don't have as many because uh, you know the king can be stuck in the corner or our king is in the corner, it's already a draw. And so the key squares for rook pawn will only be these two. So therefore, white's king needs to be on f2 or f1 in order to defend both. So we're simply uh, one move short, yeah? We go king f3, king goes to g1, black wins. So that's the uh, problem with knight to g3. So let's go back. So therefore, knight f2 is the only correct, uh, correct move, king c3. Now we're in a mad rush to get our king over. Knight h1, king f3. Okay, so he still tries to shoulder our king. But luckily, we managed to, we managed to get to the f2 square. And so it's stalemate and a draw. Okay. Next exercise. Um, black to play is a draw. This is actually taken from a famous game. This is um, Mark Timonoff, Russian Grandmaster against uh, Bobby Fischer, former world champion. And um, this pawn is coming you know, down the board. So it's always important to pay attention to that. It's amazing how many people uh, start calculating and they, they, they realize the pawn's going the wrong way. So I have to sometimes just make it yeah, pointed out, pawn's going down the board. Uh, so Fisher playing black here, he's uh, in desperate situation. Looks like you know uh, White is trying uh, as you know if you can get his bishop to say b6 and try to push out the way and then try to push a pawn, you could be in some trouble. Um, so black to play. What do you think is the correct move here? So if you can play like Mr. Fisher himself. <clears throat>
think they've all fallen asleep. <laughs> yeah, no videos on at the moment. End games can be a bit boring, but like I say, they're great. If you know them, you can just play the right moves. Oh, good, Charlie's. Charlie's here. Charlie's still, <laughs> Charlie's still alive. He's Friendly, hanging there. Yeah. <laughs> great. It's, it's nice to see you guys when obviously you're focusing. Aaron's in the waiting room. He's ready. Yeah, he's ready. Um, okay, so black to play, what to do is the question. Um, Dylan has said, Count, couldn't any move with the king work? Actually, not so much. Like, there's only really one drawing solution here. Time is of the essence in these sorts of end games because, like, this pawn is coming pretty quick. So, Charlie has the, the right idea. Good. Um, so, basically, if your king could be in front of the pawn, that's the ideal situation, right? King in front of the pawn would be perfect, and then black wouldn't ha uh, sorry, white would have a way to kick you away. Now, of course, that's not a uh, not possible in this situation. And so the next thing you have to know is to um, defend with your king actually from behind. It's a very important uh, technique. So king d3 is imperative. We need to start bringing our king to kind of have this opposition from behind. And this is a very important defensive idea, as you will see um, in, in a second. Bishop a5 is um, kind of not really helping because like he's going bishop b6 anyway and our bishop would have to move. So bishop a5 just kind of wastes a tempo. We need to get our king closer and you'll see uh, why that is in just a second. So king d3. Of course, white can't advance the pawn because we'll just, uh, we'll just sacrifice our bishop for, for that. So that's not a problem. So instead, he has to go bishop to b6 to try and make any sort of progress. Um, we definitely can't exchange bishops because it'll be a loss to king of one endgame. So bishop needs to go somewhere over here, bishop g5, bishop to c7. So now the idea again is to start moving this pawn. So bishop e3 to defend and bishop to d6. So you can see kind of what white's idea was. He's trying to reroute this bishop around and get bishop c5, right? So now because our king is a little bit closer, we're just in time to get king c4. And this is the critical move that ensures we get that, that draw, right? Because we're defending from behind, we stop white's idea of going bishop c5, okay? Um, so it doesn't really matter what white does here. It should just be a, a draw with, with best play. So yeah, I'm going to know much more there. There's one called trick that you can work, it's worth knowing actually. Let's say you do this, bishop c7, bishop f2, bishop g3. Okay, again, we have to decline the trade and bishop to a7. So this could be a good question. So black to play, how do you secure the draw here? Give you a minute to think about it. Only one minute. <laughs> it's easy, Sarah. These are like England's next up and coming grandmasters. I agree. And they're going to overtake us both. <laughs> yeah, see, Charlie said you've got enough time for the whole game. So he knows. He's a, <laughs> he's, a, he's a bullet streamer. He's because uh, I've been playing all the bullets, uh, bullet, which exactly. I involved myself. That's the way. <laughs> you got to play some more bullets, Sarah, then you'll know that. Uh, stressful. <laughs> the one minute's plenty of time. It's not. It's like finish a whole game that time. Alex is always watching Magnus's games and it's crazy how well he can play. Like, well, if you watch Andrew Tang, he plays for 15 seconds. Yeah, that's what Alex watches <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah. how do you do? Apparently, you can use your keyboard to make moves and it makes them faster. Yeah, they get all the, like the high tech gear. I just got some. Oh, <laughs> I've, got, I've got a better mouse now, so I'm like not, not, so, not so bad these no, days. Wireless mouse. I've got the wireless mouse. Right, Dylan, the king on c4 and the good swan. Um, one. Move, though. You can move the black. Um, bishop f2 draws, right? Um, well, I assume you mean bishop c7, yeah? So bishop f2 doesn't draw. Bishop c7, yeah. Um, yeah, very good. So those of you who said bishop c7 or bishop f2 meaning c7, um, yeah, this is a really nice, clever way to make the draw. So it's very, uh, it's worth just noting that this is a good resource to, to keep in mind. Otherwise, white is advancing that pawn. If he manages to advance the pawn, it becomes much harder to uh, to secure the draw. So it's very important we stop that pawn advancing at all times. So bishop c7 is a pretty uh, cool trick to know. All right, let's go to the next one. So here we can see a situation where now the pawn it has managed to advance further forward, and so therefore lacks position, a uh, defensive task has become much, much harder. It's white to play. Um, so again, have to take a minute and try to work out how white should go about winning this position. If any of you guys have seen the Centurini position, it's kind of similar theme to that. I guess one 
and I'll see how much you've studied your, studied your endgames. Sure. Have you seen the Centrini position, Sarah? Yes, I have. It's, uh, that's one of my favorites, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I do. You mentioned the name. I don't know a lot of them by their name. I just know them. So it's quite, but yeah, I do love them. Do love okay. them. So uh, we've got bishop h6 and bishop g7 from most people, Ryan, Frankie. Yep, excellent. So that's definitely the, the right idea. We have to get this bishop off the diagonal. Um, so that's definitely the first step. The, anything like deflecting the bishop, bishop d2, he can kind of just ignore you and let's go bishop b2. So we need to get the bishop simply to, uh, to g7. So bishop h6 is the correct first move. Um, Black might try to go king h7 since he's got nothing better, trying to do that defense from, from behind. Uh, bishop g7. Yeah, it's white to move. Uh, bishop to b4. And now bishop comes back to b2. And so basically what white's managed to achieve here is he's changed the diagonal of the, of the defending bishop. So before the bishop had a long diagonal, which meant it has plenty of um, moves to, it can make. So it's not easy to deflect it or to put it in a zugzwang situation. But now the only way to stop the pawn moving is for the bishop to be on this uh, diagonal instead. And so you can see it's like much shorter, right? And whenever they're uh, shorter, it's like this principle of exhaustion, which is like this uh, zugzwang, right? Where they um, can just be so tired that they just can't defend any longer. So bishop to f8. And now you can start using the deflection ideas, bishop a3. Uh, of course, you can't take because the pawn pushes through. So bishop h6. And then just uh, zugzwang, yeah, bishop e7. And black's uh, pieces can no longer defend. They're too, they're too tired. So that's uh, it's kind of similar to Centurini position. Um, for those of you that don't know what, what we're on about, Centurini is basically where a position like uh, this, something like this, king would be here and bishop would be on a2 um, with white to move. <clears throat> so it's something similar where pawn is now just one square from promotion and black has to kind of the best defensive setup that he can get at the moment. Um, so the first thing you need to do is kind of transfer the bishop to, to g8 to force the bishop off this diagonal, right? And so the first thing you do is go something like, uh, which doesn't really matter, bishop b5, for example, and you're trying to go bishop uh, to d3, bishop to h7, and bishop to g8. That's, that's your winning plan. But the issue here is that black can go like king g6, and after, say, bishop g3 check, king goes to h6, and now you can no longer get bishop on h7. So basically what I have to do is kind of then go back f5. And you, you basically, you're basically wait, waiting, uh, you waste a move. And because of the original position, black has the best defensive setup. And you'll see why this is in a second. With bishop on f5, um, black is kind of a little bit zugzwang because he kind of would like to be able to skip his turn actually here. King g5 is no good because it allows bishop h7. And moving the bishop is also going to be a bad move as well, as you'll see in a second. So let's say it goes bishop b3. Now we go bishop to d7, threatening to come back around this way, sort of the starting position. So this means black needs to get his king back over, over here as quickly as possible. So off he goes. Bishop check and king f6. So we made improvement. It looks like we didn't do anything. It looks like we just uh, we went around in a circle and uh, just returned back to the starting position. But actually, we um, what we managed to do was put the bishop on b3 rather than on a2. And so what that means is we can now go bishop a2 with tempo. Very important. Because, okay, of course he can't take because we're queen, right? And if he goes bishop a2, now the difference is he didn't get a chance to go king g6, king h6. So now we go bishop c2, and all of a sudden he can't stop us. All right, so it goes king g5, bishop h7, king h6. All right, we've, we've made it. Bishop here, bring bishop out, threatening to queen. He tries to go here, bishop c2. It's like a little uh, game of... Um, game of torture for your duck, 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 goose or something, mm -hmm. and uh, eventually black is uh, is just yeah, it's again. So uh, white wins.
So that's just the centurion position where you have to kind of um, find this, this idea of bishop a4. You, you first go around circle, force them out the way, and then bishop a4. Okay, um, so moving on. This is another very um, important position to know, another favorite of mine. Yes, favorite. So it's, as well. Yeah, so it's black to play. Take a minute. We have opposite color bishops. Um, black to play, what, how, uh, what, what move is, is holding for, for black? Yeah, tell us in the chat, please. Charlie's gone bishop c7, then bishop e7, then bishop d7. <laughs> you got there eventually, Charlie. That's good. Again, it's kind of like a 50 50 decision because, like, blacks, uh, so white's fighting to go e6. So you either have to go bishop d7 or you have to go bishop c4. So you have to decide which one of those is the uh, correct way to defend. Yeah, well done, Dylan. Now people are starting to second guess themselves. I'm not quite sure. Mm -hmm. This is a problem with the lack of knowledge, right? You're always relying on guessing or calculation, and calculation can often be, um, you know, can be wrong calculation, calculating too far ahead. Principles are more reliable. Hmm. Um, okay, so yeah, two choices here basically for black, and we have to find out which is the right way to defend. If we play the move bishop c4, this is actually inferior because although it does stop white from advancing e6 because we can just take all the pawns off and of course make a draw um what it doesn't do is keep pressure on the f5 pawn and so because of that it means white can now um bring his king around so king d4 bishop a2 probably bishop g5 first white backs is going to sit king c5 bishop a2 and king d6 and once white manages to get this set up and pushes those pawns further forward uh black is lost Right, the, pawns, the, the further the pawns get down the board, um, that the harder it is for you to defend because you're running out of space. So bishop d7 is imperative and you have to just simply sit. And this is kind of a common theme whenever you're the weaker side. Sometimes it's not pleasant to be able to sit, but this concept of sitting is, uh, is a very important one because it, you don't want to make your position any worse, basically. Often uh, I've noticed that people, when they're in a situation of you know, the, weak, the weaker side, they try to too much too hard to be active all the time. right? And sometimes that's a good thing, but um, situations like this, you're just looking to make kind of a fortress. So the bishop just simply moves back and forth and just say to white, well, what do you want to do? Because now the king can never move and go to d6 because the f5 pawn would, would, would hang. And so it's just simply a fortress, right? The black, the white moves pawn to f6, makes our job easier. There's nothing that he can, he can do really. So there's a draw. Okay, um, black to move here. What do you think the result should be? So is it going to be winning for black? Is it going to be a draw? You guys think again it's opposite color bishops uh it's black to move yeah. black to move what do you think the result should be Let's got an answer from Ryan. Got no answers yet. <laughs> from Dylan. Is it the correct answer? Are they the right answers? There you are. Yep, Charlie's got it. Uh, Chris has got it. Frankie is saying something about the H pawn, which is the A pawn. Uh, Correct corner for black. Okay, yep. 
I see. Yes, there's a good um, little bit of detail that Frank has mentioned as well, where he's uh, four ahead and thought that, okay, this, bishop, this pawn is not going to be a problem because we have the, um, the right color bishop for the corner. So it means if white was to end up in a situation where he could sacrifice this bishop for this pawn, then run his king to the corner, he doesn't have that defensive um, concept. I mean, I don't think it would work anyway, because after bishop c2, like, we could always go g5 and deny him the chance to, to sack his bishop. But yeah, basically here, it's actually winning for black. And it's kind of weird because <clears throat> if you're like, if you're poor, you've got, you know, uh, two pawn islands rather than before, you have the one pawn island with the, with the white pieces. Um, but for those who don't attended our pawn play masterclass, I mentioned that kind of these uh, pawn values. And I, I, I said that, uh, you know, during the opening middle game, usually the pawns in the center would be worth more. But as she gets closer to the end game, then they tend to be the more, uh, they're on the flank, then they're, they're, they're stronger, and worth more. So actually here, black would rather you know, having pawns on, on both flanks than, than having them kind of uh, in, in the middle, in the center there. So yeah, black should be able to easily win because his strategy, his plan's very straightforward. He's going to put both pawns on dark squares so they can't be uh, attacked by white. He's also going to put the king kind of in the center. And what he's going to do is whilst his bishop guards this pawn, his king's going to come over and literally just launch his pawn down the board. He's going to force white to take that, that pawn. And then his king will be able to come back across and help the other pawn uh, to promote. So it's a pretty simple winning plan. So it's like king f6. Um, let's say white does, I don't know, something. Or just, let's say just moves back and forth with his bishop. Put my pawn on g5. So, well, probably I should do this first. It's a bit better technique, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> should always have good technique. Um, and eventually just do something like this. Okay, put my king over there. And I'm going to just push my pawn forward. If, they, if my bishop gets attacked, I'm just going to have these guys defending each other. And then my technique is very straightforward, right? Force him to sacrifice his bishop, and then my king comes back, and this guy will easily promote. Right? If this pawn was on the H file, it would actually be a draw, yeah, because then the king can go to that corner. We have the wrong color uh, bishop. Okay. Next one, white to play. Uh, pawn is coming down the board. Is this a draw? If so, what move would you would you make here? <clears throat> It's funny when they try to, uh, to join the study, you know, like, <laughs> you can see them. <laughs> Thinking they're gonna find the answers, but actually the answers are hidden because they're interactive both anyway. So like they'd have to solve them. The, the <laughs> <No. laughs> I think I can see the answers actually in the study. Oh. Right. Because you're, you're a contributor, that's why. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's better to, better to know, know what you're doing and not look for answers. Mm -hmm. Work it out yourself and then you won't forget it. You're rewarding. So what Ryan's saying get the knight to c5. What do you mean here? I think he does he mean playing knight f4? I'm having a lot of rotation issues today. I mean <laughs> skip from white's perspective. Um knight f2 is a very popular suggestion. A lot of people um like it makes sense because you're getting closer but knights are funny pieces yeah they are which is why it's important to have a bit of these no this knowledge because otherwise um you know when you've got the one you're low on time you need to know accurately where to put the knight it's uh, can be very difficult yeah just getting it closer to the pawn doesn't necessarily help guarantee anything yeah Brandon explained earlier in that example uh -huh. So knight f2 looks like kind of maybe the most logical move, but actually it looks like white's losing. Yeah, if I just go f, if I just go c2. I don't see how white is now holding his position. Yeah, maybe. If a knight, if a knight was on e2, it'd actually be a draw. Right, knight e2, because like knight on e2, king d2, and then like uh, knight d4 would be a draw. Um, which I actually think might be in later questions. Maybe I should mention too much. <laughs> um, Do you want to ask something? 
you can speak in something you want to say, Jenna? Um, wouldn't like knight d3 if you check the king? And then you, oh yeah, that wouldn't work. Yeah, because now you need knight here. <laughs> so you can go with knight c5 maybe. If I go king here, what's happening? Looks like you're going to run out of checks, yeah? Give one check. King b. No, I was going to go king b2, but yeah, probably king b2. I'm going to go king here. Yeah, that's easier, isn't it? <laughs> Although, now allow this one. Oh. Okay. <laughs> king. That's a tricky. I'll yeah, go here, though. Go here, go to knight f2. Oh. <laughs> She needs knight. Um, hmm, okay. Hang on. You guys can help us out if you want as well to just answer in the chat. Um, king. So it's king d3 then. I check. King c4. Yeah, so maybe just do it like this. And then how's he? Like a fork. Yeah, so maybe this is yeah. best. You've got the king on the right flank. Yes, yeah, so it's knight f2, it's just uh, it's losing after after c2. That's so it doesn't, doesn't work. Um, yeah, so actually the only move that's drawing here is to go knight to knight to f4. And that way, um, okay, first of all, we have a threat of knight e2 check. So basically, let's, mm -hmm. let's assume that black's going to do the same thing. He's going to go c2 again. Um, if he doesn't, let's say he goes king to, uh, to d2, trying to block off the knight. This is a tricky question, actually, because uh, white to play only has one move to draw here. So see, let's see if anyone can find actually. I'll be quite impressed if you can. So I'll give you uh, some time. White to play and draw. What's the only move that draws here? Wow, very, very good. Ryan's got it. Frankie's got it. That's the thing when you when you uh, you know really spice it up a little bit like this kind of like gives it away you know they they start looking for the most unexpected move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. You 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 all got it. Archie's got it too. Um, yes, yeah, so this ninety six is a very nice idea. So this is a common thing with the knights that they're very deceptive. It looks like you quite want to be as close as possible, but actually often being farther away is is more helpful to defending the pawn. Because now when they go like c2, knight d4, uh, if they queen, then you are, you manage to get back in time to uh, make the fork and so to the draw. So uh, so king d2 doesn't work basically. So let's say white uh, black tries c2. Okay, now we get that position that I've I mentioned before with knight on e2. And after king d2, knight d4, queen, and knight b3 mm -hmm. check again secures the draw. So uh, yeah, as long as you're a little bit careful, then you should be able to find the right path for the, the right route for the knight and uh, guarantee the draw then. Okay, this one is a good one to pay attention to because we're going to be practicing this position later on. So you, get, you guys can have a chance to, um, yeah, basically the, the latter part is we're not, we're not going to ask you to do the whole the whole thing like right from start to finish because I think mean, that's a bit. I wanted to, but Brandon. I, yeah, I, <laughs> you got you got you got you got me you got me to thank for saving you from that torture. Um, so you have to do like the final stages of it, which is I think the most most important you need to know. Um, and here's a very key part of this uh, process. So what White has done so far is perfect technique, but it does allow the Black King to, to escape temporarily, right? We want the King in the corner of our, the color corner of our Bishop. And so really he's trying to run towards the safe, the safe corner, ideally. Um, so White to play, how do we stop the King from getting out? This is known as, the, uh, as a barrier technique. This is the one that a uh, former woman's world champion didn't know. She was grandmaster. master. There's a really funny video of it on YouTube. Yeah, there's a YouTube video. You can you can search it uh, after the session, <laughs> and uh, you can just see like the the the, the stress on her face. And she's like, because <laughs> she, she, she knows, of course, it's a winning position, but then she just didn't know how to, how to do it. So yeah. It's like it's like humiliating, right? Yeah, um, I mean, especially I've, for some of her caliber. I've only had this twice um, in my chess yeah. Brandon said he's only had it once. Once I actually drew just because I had no time at the back when we did get increments. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> I didn't, didn't remember once the, the, time, yeah. the time I had this in Blitz, I just I just flagged the person. <laughs> 30. 30. I can't I can't yeah I can't 
it's super fast. Plus two. Like, to be fair, we're both like down to like under 10 seconds by the time we've got this position. So I was like, oh, I can't be bothered to meet you. Like, this one's gonna, it's gonna flag you instead. Mine was an over the board game. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, have we got any answers here? I haven't got anything come through to me. Have you got anything, Brandon? Anything? Yeah, we've got Frankie and Ryan have both got the right the right way. Yep, and Frankie's doing a good uh, explanation as well. Yeah. So good good stuff. Um, yes, knight d7 is uh, imperative, actually. And it's quite a common theme that your knight stays kind of on this W-type uh, path. And so knight d7 is very important, stopping the king escaping. And if the king now tries to go c6, making a break for it, then bishop back to d3 shows a really nice uh, coordination of the knight and bishop working together and preventing the king from escaping. So now when the king comes, has to go back, bishop e4 is the easiest uh, technique just to force the king uh, back onto the on, on the back rank. And then if you're good at this sort of thing, you should be able to do it quite quickly. Knight would continue with the path like this. Here we have his waist to move, right? Otherwise, we do this, check here, 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 come back there, 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 there. Uh, ways to move, go here, check, 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 and then mate. Got it? All right, good. Remember that. It's gonna it's gonna happen later. You're gonna practice with each other. Yeah, so yeah, this is the final, it's the final position you're 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 after, basically. And remember to waste those moves, right? Sometimes you, you know to make progress, you have to just kind of put them in a bit of a zigzag, just waste waste to move. And uh you you help them to go to the to the corner voluntarily. Um okay, so what do you think we should do now, Sarah? Should we go through yeah, so how we do this, or should we? We're going to have a um a break at three o'clock. So I don't know. Do should we go? Should we get them to play their games in that position now? Just so they're doing something interactive. Uh, games now, or do you mean during the break? Should we do it now? Sure. Yeah, why not? Okay. So um, I've got the pairings um here. You just have to share with each other your um your usernames if that's okay. Um, you just play one game with white and one game with black. Now um, I'm just going to share my screen now. Um, so just. Second, I should be able to. Yeah, do you mind uh, unsharing yours for a minute? Brandon? Sure, yeah. Okay, so um, now I just have a quick look at my screen. I'm just going to show you how to do it. I'm sure most of you know already, but just in case you have any problems. So, um, guys over here. Okay, so this is the position that um, I want you to start from. So, I'm going to put the link in the chat. Um, the time control, well, actually, I'm going to let Brandon pick what the time control is. So we want to have a break at three o'clock um, so that you can, you know, just have a bit of fresh air or whatever. So we need to be done by three, but Brandon and I can go over the games after three. So what do you reckon, Brandon? Maybe five, two? Or five, two. Yeah, something like that would be good, I think. So play one with white and one with black. And what I like you to do is to share um, your... Uh, yeah, share the link to your game with me and then I can have them all up on my screen and you can see how you're getting on. So once you've got your game started, can you share the link with me in the chat, please? And the, just in case you don't know how to do it, you've got this link, continue from here, play with a friend, um, choose the position will automatically come up, choose whatever because you're going to play one with white and one with black and then um, you can just type in the username. So we should do the person playing white uh, should such to, to, to send invite? Sure, sure. That's absolutely so Archie, Frankie, and Chris, you guys can send the invite to Dylan, Charlie, and Ryan. Yeah, have one go with white and one go with black, and we're hoping for hundred percent for white. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let the team down, you're all good players. If okay. black wins, there's there's been a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so. Any draws. Um so yeah, please do give me the link to your game once. It started. Okay, you've never done it before, Ryan. Well, you know, we can go through this lots. I mean, we just thought it would be good. Can't challenge. It says, only allow a friend to challenge. Um, okay, do you want, who are you playing, Chris? I've forgotten. Do you want, Ryan, do you want to try and challenge Chris, if that's okay? And then it should work. And when, when anyone... Maybe follow each other, and that might make it. Yeah. Maybe become friends. We're all, we're be all friends. friends. We're all friends here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're all friends. We're all trying. I, I follow Sarah. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully she follows me back who knows yeah um and Chris hasn't tried it either well that's good that, that's our point of today we're learning and it doesn't matter uh, I'm sorry I said that white needs to get every win it doesn't matter if you get it wrong you'll learn from it and you can have another go at it okay I just wanted to have a go see how you're getting on it's very important to know what I find amazing about this is the coordination between the knight and the bishop so the knight mm -hmm. covers the square and the bishop can't cover for, so in this example the dark squares has anyone got any game links that they can put in the chat for me so I can have them up on my screen? 
or were you struggling to get it work? Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching you guys. See how good your technique is. Okay, I'm going to show you again how to do this. So the link is in the chat, and then you click. Let's just go back. So you go click on that link that I've given you. You get this position. You click continue from here. Play with a friend, and then um, so it needs to be um, real time. Choose the time control. So five two. Um, here we are. Five two. And then um, it doesn't matter what color you are in the first game, but if you want to be white, you can click white. Click that. And then, um, and then you just click here and you type in um, your opponent's username on lead chess. Okay, so I don't know. Um, Raul rules if you wanted to play Alex in this position. And then when Raul rules accepts, the game will start. There you go. I put some instructions in the chat. Okay, and I'll keep going through it. Anyone needs help? Has anyone managed to get this to work? Hopefully you have. Are they already playing? Yeah, they, they just, yeah. Okay, anyone else put the link in because I want to see. Well, we're not going to say, make any comments on how you played well or not so well now. We'll do that afterwards. So far, although to be fair. So far, so far. good. He did, the, he did the barrier technique, which is yeah, good to see. Yeah, we got, we got there and then... Um, Looks pretty good. He wasted the move. Fantastic. Yeah, perfect so far. <laughs> I think we have an imminent stalemate coming up. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, you did the hard part and then. <laughs> yeah, you remember the bishop needs to go to c6, right? Not, not to c8. Uh -huh. um, all right, Ryan's got a link. Good. Check right. his game out. Uh, Frankie, you're probably. Um, Frank, Frankie was pre moving. Super far, yeah. Pre moving is risky stuff. Yeah, right, never been really All right, is All right. this uh, no pressure? So, to see how this so far, so good. Ooh. And then we're just oh, waiting for Dylan good. and Archie. So, if you've got it working, that'd be great. Just let us know if you're having any problems. We're here to help. Oh, great. So, if you put the link in the chat, then please, Dylan. All right, no pressure, Chris. <laughs> oh. Like King F8 is like such a nice move, actually. It feels like you're doing him a favor because you're like, like you're going towards the wrong corner, but actually it helps white, I think, to get this, this set up. Black. Like black should just make a run for it. So it forces him. Whoa, what was that last move? Go back to you again. Oh, sorry. I thought it was. Where's you again? Oh, that one's just started. Yeah, just 96. Ooh. Remember your W. The knight used to go on the W pattern. So it doesn't, it is never, it should never be on the sixth rank until the very end. That's just a nice little W pattern like this. Yeah. It does actually look like W, it's not called that for no reason. Um, so yeah, if you make a mistake, try and get back to getting the knight and the W. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wanted to start the position from a random position, but uh, Brandon was like, no, no, we need to start from this. Um, oh, that'd be, it'd be painful to watch if it was from the start. <laughs> the only way you can get good at this is by practicing it, so that's why we're doing this. So and I wonder if they've started a new game. Uh, I do love your username. <laughs> you can just hover over their names right off the phone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Got it now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so. Blimey, hey. what's going on here? They've rotated the board. Yeah, I know. I was thinking that. I was like, whoa. whoa. Charlie's off. Oh. What? Oh, we got. <laughs> what? What's now, that, that wasn't the checkmate we uh, expected, but a win is a win. And that sounds like we made a bit. Charlie, Charlie should have made a bit of run for it. It's gone like King A5 and King B6. And... Yeah, well done. Why didn't you rematch so that Frankie can get his uh, win in before the break? We're going to take a break at three and let's go through this again. Let's see how these other games are going on. Um, so, yeah, why? I mean, don't worry, because I know some of you are new to this and that's why we're learning it today. But we need to get that knight back in this W shape. So, uh, beginning position that we're starting from um like this we're all ready to be in this w so we need to get back to that so yeah i don't feel bad because um just remember that the woman's world champion can do it yeah i mean <laughs> fact, i might even try to go through here <laughs> every time it was really funny although i 
I guess I feel a bit sorry for her because it could have been anyone, but I have always known the United Bishop track mate. <laughs> Ryan's put a link in the chat. Oh, thanks, that? Ryan. Yeah, the links are given. Right, so they've started again. So how did the other games go? Oh, okay, well done. Uh, white one, fantastic. So. Let's see if Wolf Hyde can get revenge. Well. What's the bishop doing on e6? That's where your king wants to be. Yeah, the bishop gets in the way on e6, and so you just need to get it out of the way. The other game, so that one's finished off. But, and then, actually, no, so we'll go through them all after the break. I think just to go for any key points. This one, okay, so you've got back to the position that you kind of want. So now you need to be thinking about the W for the night. And don't worry if this is all new to you because it's a great way to learn. It really, I think this checkmate is great because it demonstrates and that the bishop can cover the light squares and then the knight can cover the dark squares. And the coordination of the knight and bishop and chess is really important. Mm. And let's stay on this game for a minute. Oh yeah, thank you. Do you want to accept Charlie's challenge so you can get your your winning? <laughs> oh sorry, I have I'm not in the right position, am I? <laughs> oh dear. Cool. We've gone to the <laughs> oh, <it's a> king gone. <laughs> this was the kind of starting position that I wanted and Brandon went there. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um okay frankie um yeah i don't know maybe he's not there um i guess maybe because maybe he went let's get a drink or something um and we'll just keep an eye on this then charlie you can advise in the chat what you think white should do so hmm. yeah so the king's going to the other dark squared corner. <laughs> yep. Starting in this corner, it's coming in there. So this looks like it's going to be one of those uh, 50 move rules. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you really need to think about your W technique. Charlie, do you want to say in the chat what where you think white needs to get uh, the pieces to to get the W technique? Because obviously it's a slightly different position. If you just say where you think um, white needs to get the knight and the bishop and the king, that would be great. Do you feel like that if you're defending this, it'd be better to keep the king kind of central though? Because it feels like you know it's the right idea to run to the wrong corner, but actually I feel like you make it easier than for them to get all their pieces set up and then drive you by force to the right corner. So Yeah, whenever you play this against the computer, they always go straight to the wrong corner and then you get the W and then you, you can use the pattern. Uh, but yeah, like I was, if I was playing this in the game, I feel like I would just keep my king as central as possible. Yeah, exactly. Like, I feel like that would be like harder to uh, force me into some corner. Yeah, because I guess for people that know what they're doing, once they get to the... Um, yeah, exactly. Just, yeah, like I know I'm doing when I get to the corner, but, uh, but in terms of the build the ball, I'd be like a little bit unsure, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Like, just trying to set up. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay, so let's have a think as a team where I want you to get the pieces to then. King C3. Oh, good. Well done. Frankie's taking the win and gone. <laughs> okay, maybe this is having a quick. We're taking a break at three. Um, okay, we need to get that knight into position. Good. Well, I'm happy with this. Okay, so where's that knight want to go now? Someone tell me in the chat. B3. <laughs> That's the problem though. Getting into B3 is going to take a while. So. Hmm. This looks like good technique. Yeah. Let's see five next. Yep. Excellent. And then B3. Excellent. There you go. Now it's a waste to move your bishop. Waste to move. There you go. One. Bishop B1. Now it's the same thing, but we're just like sideways. Like, sideways, yeah. It's a bit weird. But. And white's only got a minute left. Pressure now, white. <laughs> Bishop B1. 
Got to drive the king to the other corner. There you go. All right. So you've got to stop the king going to b5, so knight d4. Good. Look at his technique. All right, you got to get your king over there. Help out. King c4, good. Okay. Oh, he went back. He didn't. He didn't, he didn't make a. He went. He didn't make a run for it. So you can just go like knight b five. Stop him going towards the the wrong corner. Maybe black could finally get white a bit more time. King c five. I'll help white. How about that? Okay. All right. You play white. <laughs> I'll play white. That's sideways. The sideways thing is so yeah. confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, bishop c2 check. Let's put some back. Uh, what should we do now? Let's go knight d6. Continue with our w. Okay, looks like we need to waste a move. So like bishop b3 looks pretty good here. Aaron's just arrived. Knight b7 check. Bring your king to c6 to defend. Aaron, we're just doing the mm, king to c7. The knight and bishop checkmate. So they're just having a go uh, playing it out. Okay, so. king, king b6. Okay, at least we've uh, got back to the normal method. Bishop <laughs> e6 check. And now he's got to get knight pieces in the right square. So he's knight on a6. So knight to c5. Okay, now he's got to be careful though. Don't, don't go there just yet. First, get your bishop in position. So bishop d7, waste to move. Knight a6 check, and then mate in one. Yay! Brilliant. We did it in the end. I think, um, Charlie, did he play again after this? Yeah, he put in the thing. Ah, okay, cool, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, excellent. So, um, and did something really weird. Okay, so Aaron's just joined us, so he missed out on that, but we can um, go for it again. Um, so I think it'll be beneficial for everyone. Um, I'm just having a look. You flagged. Gosh, gosh um, you're getting some weird checkmates. <laughs> I, thought, I, I suspect that's quite unusual, <laughs> these checkmates. Um, so. um, naturally, it's possible because like, uh, some people have taught like, this way. Instead of going put the pieces on the sixth rank, they go like bishop c8, bishop a6, bishop b7, like, and then knight c6 instead. Oh, okay. I always, Which I always think it's a bit weird, but yeah, that's how some. I think it's because of Bruce Pantothini, always ah. taught it like that way. And I never really understood why he does it that way. But Yeah, I thought that this kind of thing happened by accident whilst you're trying to do your double years. It just looks weird. Like you should put the king in the corner. Like the king wants to, it's like what well, is like with the principle, right? The bishop is the, the corner of the king. When it's like this, it makes it feel like, well, why, why is the bishop need to be the right, uh, why is the king to be in that corner? So. Yeah, so um, Aaron's just joined. So we might need to just go through the pattern. And Quickly again, we're on my screen, but I'm happy to just put it on mine. Uh, w. So um, I'm going to keep these games open because we can have a look at them after the break. But let me just get a new tab. I've got about a million tabs open, but that's okay. Um, that. I am Branadum. I am Branadum. <laughs> right. Like to well, see. Uh, how do you want? Me, how do you want me to get the starting position? I'll just try to do it like this. What for? Um, I just want to do like the W starting position to show Aaron because he just joined a bit late. Uh, okay, so put bishop on f5 then. Oh, I don't want bishop on f5. Okay, we're happy with that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, what am I doing? Can you do analysis for it? That'll be fine. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is, um, we're trying to get this w shape. I know that I've just heard there's another way of learning it, but we're just looking at the w method. But obviously, if you know it a different way, then that's fine. Um, we can play some more games after the break um, because I think some people need some practice, which is a hard one to know. Um, the knight uses this w and um, if it's white to play here, the bishop goes here to stop the king going here. And then uh, we use this route with our knight. So um, it is three o'clock now. So we will take um, a short break for 15 minutes. And then I'll let you try some more games um, after the break. And we can try and basically, I want everyone to be perfect at doing this by the end of the session. I would say he wants everyone in the class to know how to do it confidently. So you can beat anyone, you can beat Magnus Carlsen if you've got this position against him. So, um, yeah, we might switch to opponents after the break, um, just to make it 
um, fair. Um, so yeah, that sounds good. Aaron, if you want, because obviously you've only just joined, if you want to try this position against the computer, that'll be a good warm up for you during the break. And we'll see everyone back here at quarter past for more end games. Um, I'm going to show Aaron how to do this against the computer. And that, that night in Bishop Church, mate, is a must know. So should we, should we mix up the pairings a bit and just have one more go at getting that right? Just tell, tell us in the chat or raise your hand. I'd like to know what you guys want to do. But it is quite a tricky chat, mate. So, um, I mean, Brandon, I think, yeah, I think, uh, oh yeah, we need to analyze the games. I think Frankie and Charlie um, seem to understand it quite well. Um, I think the others might want a bit more help. So maybe they could try a different training position. That might be a good idea. Um, but let's look at the games first. So let's, should I just share my screen? Let's just make some comments on their games. Okay, let's have a look. Should be able to see my screen now. Okay, let's go through the links that I've got. So um, yeah, Brandon, I'm happy for you to just make comments. So um, this was the game uh, from Charlie and Frankie or one of their games. Bishop B6 was the first move played. Um, I think the bishop doesn't really want to go that way, right? He also is just on this kind of h7 diagonal. Um, it's usually just not, yeah, you start knight f7, and if they go king g8, then you can just waste a move like bishop g6, and you get the you kind of get the position that you want. And yeah, that should be pretty yeah. straightforward. So they can talk if they want. Um, so yeah, Charlie and Frankie, if you want to just talk about the game, but yeah, isn't knight f7 makes sense here? Bishop b6. Um, bishop g6 makes it a little bit, a little bit harder because now the king could try and make a run for it, go to d8, and yeah, now your knight's like deprived of its best square. I don't know why. I just have this weird thing of I, I don't like doing it on this rank. I like doing it on the side. I don't know why. I just do. So ah, okay. Probably not. Um, to okay, but like if you know how to do it this one way, you can always rotate it in your in your head as well. Mm. You should be able to like, because I had to do it for that uh, one of the where I was doing it before. So I was helping them, and it's still like rotate rotated. So I had to kind of visualize it the other way around as well. Okay, well, we'll do, yeah, we'll do Charlie, Frankie first, and then we'll move on to other people's games. But yeah, I think um, I, I I agree with Brandon. I think you should really get used to a pattern because then it's really easy. I mean, this W, I know there's another way that I've heard about, but this W is really easy to learn, and then it just makes it so straightforward. Um, feel free to disagree if you want to, Brandon. <laughs> and ah, W is the way I'll do it as well. Yeah, because um, yeah, cause now you've got a slight problem, I think, because... We've got to try and cover all these squares, but we don't have the yeah. this diagonal. We, we kind of left all your pieces behind. <laughs> you need to jump over your king <laughs> for a couple of moves. The knight's um, on d7, the wish needs to be on d3, so. so. Yeah, now um, there's no sort of method to it, it's just more. Random. Yeah, that's the word I needed. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would definitely learn the, the method because it just makes it a lot easier. But I mean, while it's on to you, you managed to get... <coughs> got there in the end. You get the checkmate. So, um, yeah, got that game. Um, I will just... I've got loads of positions open up here. So I think I'll do these and then I'll have a look at the ones in the chat. So I think this was the first game that Frankie and Charlie played. Um, so... Okay, yeah, so now we've got the perfect starting position. Took a few extra moves, but now I think... Frankie knows what it's doing. Yeah, I'm very happy so far. Feel free to interrupt Brandon if you think. No, it's all good. Perfect. And, yeah, this is, I think he's played it. Yeah. Uh, he did this, this weird way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have, to, you have to show off at the end with a weird way. <laughs> the weird ending. But, yeah. I thought that was the normal way. That's how I've always done it. So what have you learned like the W? But the king's not in the corner. Yeah, yeah. I, I learned the W way, and then this checkmate is just the one I've always done with like bishop a6, bishop b7, knight c6. Okay. Okay. So I'd do it a different way. I'd go uh, after what was it, king b8? Yeah. We go back. Yeah. Yeah. So bishop b6, king b8. So I'd I'd go knight c5 here. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I would. Knight c5, king a8, and then bishop d7. And I just put all my pieces in a, in a line. King b8. Nice. Yeah, six, nice. And then yeah, but again, it doesn't matter. I mean, you've done the hard part and then we get checkmate. So, yeah, that's good. 
It just I, seems like more based on the principle because you're taught to just do it on the, uh, the same color corner as a, as a bishop, right? So yeah. it's this way the king actually is in the corner. This one, yeah. he's technically not. So it feels like we're going to put the king in the right corner. Yeah, this one we just needed to give a check and then it was checkmate instead of the stalemate. But oh no, sorry, this is Chris. And yeah, let's have a look at this one now. I've got this up. So um, Chris and um, remind me who's is this is Dylan. No, sorry, Ryan. Um, I'll, you two can speak. I'm just letting you unmute yourselves. Um, do you want to speak or let me go through your game, question, Ryan? Yeah. Okay, so I don't know whether this was your first, second, third or something game, but well, let's have a look. So we started. Well, I don't like Bishop B6. What do you think, Brandon? Yeah, 95. Yeah. Um, it's, it, the Bishop always gets in the way if you put it there. The king wants that path. So he also, he also a sick Frank all to himself. <laughs> Yeah, so. Now it's confusing. <laughs> yeah, very confusing. Knight D7. Okay, yeah. you've got Knight D7, you're still in control, that's fine. Kind of got our W. Yeah, I think it's kind of all right. And I just need to waste to move good. And then, yeah. yeah, this is played pretty well, actually. Um, okay, that's a mistake. You could have gone just uh, Knight B7 check. Yeah, because the king can't escape this way. Can't so. escape anyway, yeah. So it's going to Knight B7, and then uh, King C8, King C6. I don't put it on analysis board or do that now. Um, yeah, so we can go, we're just suggesting going here and then the king here, and then obviously we've got everything covered. So, what I love about this checkmate is it shows the coordination between the bishop and the knight. The knight just yeah. the squares that the bishop can't. Um, okay, let's just see. Oh, this one ended in a draw. Oh, no. <laughs> um, he's out. He's, he's making a run for it. Bishop d3. Yeah. Um, so, uh -oh. yeah, it's gone a bit wrong there. So. Oh. Yeah, and here bishop b5 is possible, but I think bishop b4 is easier. Yeah. That's king c7. Because yeah, bishop b4, you force them straight back to the back rank. Yeah, they were covering everything. Yeah. Okay. It's also more logical because you keep the bishop boys on the same diagonal. So it's easier to remember what to go where to put it. All right, what's happened here? So we don't want to let the king escape. So I think here I'd probably go. Just king c6, king yeah. Six, yeah. Because um, now it feels like you've got to do some of the work again. And now the knights just kind of moving around randomly, I think. And now we're back to where the knight started. The whole point of this W is that you keep the knight uh, on that, and then that helps you on the journey to getting the king to the corner. Although we should be able to get checkmate now, because we forced the king into the corner. Just let Dylan back in. I think he had a connection problem. One second. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, oh, what's happened now then? So stalemate came, did it? I mean, now we've trapped the king, it should be fairly straightforward to win. Um, yeah, just made like three, 97, 96, bishop d5. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, whoops. Oops. Okay, well, hopefully you wouldn't do that in a real game. And um, once you've done this bit and you've got the king there, then it's fairly straightforward, okay? Next game, um, I think it was another one of Charlie and Frankie's, um, but I think we already saw this. So I think it was played pretty well. Oh. Dylan's computer crashed. Oh, okay. Don't worry, Dylan. Just having a quick look. Okay, that was got that in that game. Um, who have we got here? I don't know these usernames. Is this Archie and Dylan? Maybe? Zoomy Voyager. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice. It's a ferocious. Oh, that's a ferocious snow leopard. I thought it was a ferocious. If I said ferocious, like now leopard. <laughs> you guys have got really creative names. Mine's really boring. Yeah. It's just my name. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think we know by now that knight e six isn't the right move. We need to go uh, knight f seven. So you. What well, I think it knows about your username is it's not capitalized. Like the Sarah, like the S. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you should at least have those capitalized. It's like really. Oh. It hurts my eyes, Sarah. I can't look at it. That's the kind of thing that I care about as well, so I'm not even sure how that happened. But yeah, you're right. It should be. I think you can change it. You can change the... Uh, oh, can you? You can't change the username, but you can change the uh, like the, look, the cases. Oh, I'll do that. because that, that... Go on the settings and change it and, you know... I'll do it after the call. Help, help, help everyone's eyes. <laughs> or <our> OCD. <laughs> no, that's cool. Okay, right. So we've got back it. We've got the knight back in the W shape. Um, here you don't need to move the king to g6, just ways to move with the bishop and then the bishop can go to h7 and then we're back in the perfect position. Um, yeah, I think... You're in the wrong corner. 
yeah, I think we've messed this up and uh, it gets a bit tricky. So yeah, I will. I won't need to go any further there, but we just need to in this position. Um, so here, no, where were we? <laughs> yeah, so king f7, and then the king goes to g8, which is waste to move of our bishop. When the king goes back to f8, we've got bishop h7, and then we've got that position that we know and love, even those that do it slightly different at the end. Uh, that's fine. But as soon as we get that position, it's perfect because the knight just goes on its little route and then the king's stuck in the right corner and we can get checkmate. Uh, so I think it did white win that one. I don't even know. Wow, well, it went on and on. Oh, white well, did actually win at the end. Well done. That's the thing. Is yeah. this the one I was helping them with? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Okay, cool. So thanks to Brandon. It was a win in the end. <laughs> um, Wolf hiding Krish. This was their first game. Okay, so here, that's fine. This is all good. Perfect. Perfect. But I didn't even try and run away with the king. Okay, I think that, that's the best I've seen. Well done, Krish. And yeah, we've seen this stalemate one already. We don't need to do that one again. Um, okay, I don't have any more tabs open. Are there any other games we want to see? I've had one through from Ryan. A quick look. I think you guys are all experts at this. If you're not, then you can play it against the engine after the class or in your own time. So, yeah, we've got the right position. Once you get this position, you should be very happy. Ooh. You need to bring your king in. Yeah, so bishop e4 is a mistake. Because remember, the king's a slow piece, right? So you've got to bring the king first. The bishop can come at any moment. King is big and fat, he can only move one square. Yeah. I won't bring the king in. Uh, yeah, now I've no idea what's going on because we've we've lost our tech. Yeah, I mean, this is still probably, probably working, right, but it's like actually. some some strange barrier. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what's so cool about it. I know I keep saying this, but the bishop covers the light squares, and if you use the knight to cover the dark squares, then it's... Yeah, yeah so actually it seems to have worked out all right. Um, although... Uh, I don't really, you know, I don't know this position now. It looks like black is running away somehow, but white manages to win anyway. Good resilience, keep going. Oh, now you get it at the end. Perfect, got there. Um, okay, any more games that anyone wants to show me or should we move on? We've got quite a bit more material to look through. You've been challenged by Alex from the position. What, but he, I thought he was, oh no, that was me challenging him just. Oh. I just did it um, when I was suggesting the thing. I thought, I thought he was out, so um, that would have surprised me. Right, um, I'll stop sharing my screen uh, and I'll move over to you, Brandon, to get back to the lesson, but well done, everyone. I think you've mastered that. And if you haven't quite done that yet, then do practice it in your own time. I think it's important to go over that every, um, I don't know, maybe once every six months or something. Just make sure you know exactly what you're doing in case it happens. All right, so where we get to? So we did this, uh, yeah, that bishop stuff. So I, I included this um, diagram as well, just to kind of illustrate, because some of you already know this stuff, but it's good just to have this kind of uh, knowledge of minor piece configurations. Um, so generally, you would always want to go for the bishop pair when you can. Um, so you'll notice that you've always strong player games, they're trying to do this all very early on in the game. So even like opening stages, middle game stages, all they're often trying to do is just obtain the bishop pair advantage and then try to uh, keep hold of that since they're the most reliable. And so the reason I, I put it like this was because I wanted to show you that um, in terms of trying to checkmate, let's say, a lone king, uh, the two bishops would be the easiest one. Bishop and Knight's one we just did. And as you can see, it can, can be quite tricky if you don't know the, the right technique. And uh, the two knights is actually impossible, Mr. Dillon. So mm -hmm. um, you can't, can't do that. Although, yeah, you might like using the knights. Uh, I do too. Often the knights have... Um, can have more value if you have like an outpost for them or if they uh like you know fast type faster time controls they can often be uh more annoying because of, you know it's, it's easier to to um yeah to miss a, a tactic or something like that like a fork uh ryan's asking how to do it with the bishops well with the bishops are just it's just some base, basically easier because they're um more reliable right you can control every color square um, the knight's always the trickier one because it kind of moves in a very awkward way. And so the bishops, you kind of just do it similar to the way of the, uh, with the, the, the knight one, 
but you don't really you can go to any corner so, so you've got more flexibility so it should just be should just be easier so you can practice that against um on lead chess actually you can have some options in the learn practice sec section you can have, have a yeah i there. find with the two bishops and when i see juniors mess it up it's because they move their bishops like close to the enemy king whereas if you keep yeah. them further away and use your king it, it's a lot easier yeah it's just kind of rolling technique really, is, uh, what about two knights via pawn um so two knights via pawn is based i think you're probably alluding to like the troitsky stuff like troitsky line um usually that sort of stuff basically all you would need to know is to keep the pawn on the board actually because two knights against a king is not possible to, to win unless your opponent's like uh through a kick and this helps you to <laughs> to be checkmated so what you should do is in a situation where let's say there's a pawn on the board um so the black king's over here let's say black has a pawn on, on this square you want to kind of blockade that pawn as soon as possible so just to stop them use one of your knights to blockade the pawn and you use the other guys kind of like this to um stop the king from running away you can find him totally having two squares and then you can go about trying to do a, a checkmate so for example once you've got the king just confined to two squares with your other pieces then you can bring the, the knight into the action black will be in a hurry to try to get rid of this pawn but then you can give a check and now you can see the problem right after match g5 this would normally be a stalemate but uh k2 10 knight of seven eight so these sort of situations just yeah blockade the pawn as soon as possible so you give them um more chances. That's so we do a position like this. Same thing, right? White to play. You blockade the pawn, and you still got just enough time because after they go uh, h2, you give a check, king here, knight g5, and open they get a queen, you can just mate on f7. Cool. Just in time. Okay, uh, so does that answer your question, Ryan? And um, Charlie, did you want to ask something? Your hands up. Okay, cool. Right. Okay. All right, so the dumb square. Some of you guys were curious to see what this what this was. Um, wow. The dumb square for a knight is often like these kind of corner squares of the board. So the, the knight kind of doesn't ever really want to be. And so if it finds itself on these kind of dumb squares, it can often be in a lot of trouble. And so here it's kind of a funny situation where even though black has a knight and a king close to your pawn, uh, a6 is just a winning move. <laughs> and a king c8, you goes to a7. And they're completely defenseless to stopping the, uh, the pawn from promoting. So uh, that's the, the nice dumb square. <laughs> Dumbs. Um, I've heard that one before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, this one is just bishop, um, the knight, and pawn. So this is something I thought might be worth um, to show because it is not so easy to know how to to hold this position with with white because black is close to promoting and our king is really far from from the action. So I think the first two is relatively straightforward: bishop c5 check. Uh, king e2, and I think this is probably a good uh, place to ask a question. So, white to play, what do you think we should do here? <coughs> so there's only one move that's, uh, that's drawing. It's weird, my computer started making all these funny noises recently. It's starting to sound like a fridge. Yeah, I thought I had some noises. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I was like, I swear there's no like pork pies in there. <laughs> right, we've got a king c7. We have a bishop to g1. We have an advance to king. <clears throat> Frankie's more alert though. He knows why the king shouldn't move, I guess. Yeah, so I remember I was going through this from my files and I thought this is quite an interesting example because it's not so uh, as easy as, as you'd think. Um, <clears throat> so the key to these sorts of positions is not necessarily to memorize them, right? The, the key is just to, at least if you've been exposed to them, you know, once or twice, then you've got a better chance of, uh, of knowing like what, uh, some key concepts. If you ever get these positions or something similar, you kind of know like what to, uh, you know, how to think outside the box and what, what things to look out for. So king c7 looks like a natural move trying to bring the king closer, but actually it's a losing move because now knight d5 check, king d6, knight e3, and the bishop is blocked off so the pawn will promote easily. So that's a mistake. So it turns out bishop g1 is actually the only move that is uh, that's drawn here, which is quite remarkable. Um, okay, let's say black goes knight to d1, trying to get his knight across. Now we can start to bring the king, since uh, black has no like uh, check ideas. 
knight to f2. And it turns out here, again, we need to go bishop h2 because we need to kind of be uh, using this kind of circuit idea. So it's just as we learned the circuit idea of the knight before, we can use a circuit with the bishop as well. And as long as we do this, it's actually very difficult for black to uh, ever make any progress. So after king to f1, bishop goes back to e5, knight to g4, bishop comes back to d4 just in time, and this pawn can never really uh, make any progress. King back to e2, threatening this knight to d3, again, bishop back to g1, All right, just in time to make sure that uh, black can't Keep, uh, trap our bishop out of the uh, out of the game. So a bit of a weird one, but uh, yeah, worth knowing some details there. This one is a lot more common. Um, so this so, like the position itself, starts of position maybe not so much, but like the position that will uh, result is um, yeah a very common one, and definitely need to know what to do uh, in that situation. So I'll do the first few moves because this one not so important. So bishop starts uh, goes to uh, d7 to attack the pawn. Of course, black has to keep the pawn, uh, and bishop c6 check. So so far so good. If black plays knight f3, of course that would be a big mistake because we go king e2, and when you queen, I can just skewer and uh, yeah take your queen. So black goes king to g1 instead, and this is the uh, yeah moment of interest. So it's white to play. How do we hold this position? Mm -hmm. I like this. I want two moves as well. So I want the first move, and if they <laughs> do something, <laughs> they I, want your I want your follow-up move. So most you have the first, like the right initial idea, but the second idea you're kind of struggling a little bit with. I'm not quite sure. Oh, okay. that's about it. okay, so let's have a look. So yeah, mostly you said bishop to h1, which is kind of, I think, easy to see because why is knight g2 check is coming and, and then promotion. Um, and of course, black's controlling the key squares in terms of the rook pawn. So bishop h1 is, is, is forced. And this looks like a crazy idea. These, those of you that haven't seen this position before, you're thinking what's must be, uh, you know, why it must be losing because after they take, the king goes to one of these squares and they've got a knight. So surely the knight will be able to force your king away and then they'll be able to queen. Um, actually, no. One of these moves is drawing. But only one. One of them's losing. So you have to find the right square to go to. And the way I tend to sorry. Sorry, I was gonna say you can't lose a tempo with the knight, which is what's so amazing. So, yeah. Um, it's not like a bishop where you can try and you know move it around and waste a move. You can't yeah. move with the knight. So square is very important. Which square? F2 or F1? Yeah, exactly. So here what you got to remember, the way I, I remember it is just to put your king on the same colour square as the knight. Oh, is that how you remember it? Yeah. So, because for example, like the knight could be on a on a eight, right? Yeah. And it's not easy to know. Like, if you try to calculate how where to put your king, and if you, like, and of course, if you're low on time, you need to be able to make this decision quickly. So, if the knight's on a eight, my rule just says your king f one. Ah, oh, that's interesting. And then it goes like knight b six, king f two. Let's say knight d uh, d five, king f one. Knight comes with check, king goes back to f two, and I'm I'm holding a draw. So it's, it's a very quick way to be able to work out which uh, color square I need to be on. I've learned something there, Brandon. Thank you. <laughs> so if you go king f1, you're on the wrong color square. And so now you're losing because the knight can go to f5, king to f2, and knight to e3. And all of a sudden, your zugs wang. Yeah, you can't go back to f1. And so you have to take, and my king gets out or promotes. So king f2, and this is just a draw. It's pretty remarkable, but it's a draw because the knight can't lose the tempo, as Sarah mentioned. And so if they try to do the same thing, knight f5, king f1, knight check, king just goes back to f2. Black's not making any progress. So it's pretty, yeah, pretty cool study. Okay, next one, we've got a, um, now we're, we're the one of the stronger, the stronger sides. So we're the one using the knight uh, trying to, to convert. And so, you know, a little bit of details then, you know what kind of uh, resources white has available, but the right moment he's gonna go push one and try to, to hold. Um, so I'll get, again, I think I'll probably do the first few moves for you. So knight d3. 
Bishop goes to, to a1, otherwise knight, knight b2 is coming. So bishop to a1, knight to b2. And white just goes king to e1, so he's just kind of waiting. And let's let's do it here then. So white black to play. What do you think would be the correct move? Frankie, you look like a grandmaster there because you're looking at the ceiling and that's what all good players do and they're like thinking about the moves like. <laughs> what is it? Tell me ceiling. <laughs> Working it in there. I like it. It's great. He's just he's been watching too much Nakamura. <laughs> Basically, to be to be Nakamura, all you have to do is just uh, talk about your moves and then just draw 50 billion arrows. There goes, 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 um, I've got from Charlie oh. Hill. Uh, oh, yeah, I've got Charlie. So you want knight d3, king b2, king b1. Uh, so what's, what's the idea here? So knight, knight, knight d3, <laughs> king e2, king b1. I take your knight. He takes, oh, and I go king c2, drop. Damn, mate. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so basically it's, it's a tough position, isn't it? Because if you go king b1, which looks like the natural move, um, now black and white just goes king d2. And if you take on a, a1, right? Go make sure you go to the right, the right square. Go? Where do we go? Tell us in the chat. We should know this by now. Use my rule. Yeah, I like your rule, actually. I never heard that before. I've definitely learned something. Charlie messed up my rule. <laughs> What's my rule, Charlie? <laughs> Same color as the knight, yeah? So king c1. King c1 to draw. Yeah, draw. If you go king c2, whoops. <laughs> So yeah, king c1. Um, so basically, you can't to go king b1, and so you have to find an alternative way. So it's not it's not an easy position at all. And so black has to uh, ends up having to kind of waste some moves. Um, now it turns out you can kind of waste a move of your knight if you do it this way around, because you can also waste a move of your king as well, uh, rather than first committing your king into the corner. So um, you'll see what black how what black does here. King e2, king to c1, king to e1, knight c5, king to e2, and now king b1. So we kind of waste a move with this king c1. And the point is now when I go king d1, knight to d3, king to d2, we get knight to b2 in this situation. Very important. So we don't allow them to go uh, king d1, but we also just make sure this we get this position, but with um, with white to move. If it was black to move, then black would be forced to take, and then white has a chance to go king c1 and make a draw. So with white to move, he's in Zugzwang, yeah? Because if he goes like king c3, we can take king c2, knight d3. And now the king is on the wrong color square. So that's, this is basically the position you're aiming for, right? So remember this one, you get this position, but when it's not in check. And this is kind of a common theme of Zugzwang that uh, often when you're trying to break down some um, hard fortress from your opponent, you need to kind of not be looking at checks so much. You're just looking for ways to make Zugzwang. It's like this famous queen versus rook position where you have, uh, let's say queen here, king here, rook there, king here, and it's white to play. And uh, why is it? Okay, white perspective, that's fine. And um, basically, no, this is annoying. Let's just do it. Loop around. Let's put the king up here. Because it's a bit weird for the king to be all the way down there. All right, like this. Okay. And basically, what you want is to return to this position, but with black to play, right? And so you do the same sort of thing where you just triangulate like this, and then you come back to e8. And that way, you see how we're not looking to make the check in the final situation. We're just trying to um, control squares. And this, this is what Zook's uh, black. And that is, there's no good moves. If king h6, queen f8 wins the rook. If rook g8, then queen h7, uh, h5 is mate. And if the rook, uh, so basically this means the rook has to be separated. And then you have a series of checks. 
Like this, you've just got to be careful. If you go to G2, King goes to F8 and he has like no checks and Queen D5 is better. So you can go to D8, now to this, you can go pull it back there and then G1 eventually pick up the, uh, the rook. So this concept of Zugzwang is very important when you're dealing with these sorts of uh, end games. So yeah, just remember that. Okay. All right, so let's go back. Um, so the last example is this uh, another position which I thought was pretty interesting. So white to play. Um, what do you think we should we should do here then? So it's a timer. Pawns, of course, uh, going up the board, right? <coughs> See if you guys can find a way to uh, put black in Zugzwang. Frank has got it. Good. Ryan's going to the edge of the world. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I think that's a draw, Ryan. Same for Archie, which also looks like a draw. Hmm. Yeah, black has some nice defensive resource. So again, this is the whole point of studying these things. It's not also just like looking from attacking perspective, it's also from defensive perspective. So if you're the one that's the weaker side, you have some ideas of how you would uh, try to hold in these sort of situations as well. That's why it's good to learn uh, both sides. Um, it's like that bishop and knight checkmate. If you know how to run away with your king and force them to make that barrier technique, it's probably the hardest thing for them to remember. And so if you are if you find yourself in a situation where you're playing king as two bishop and knight, um, you, you can make it as difficult for your opponents as possible. Okay, so yeah, Ryan and Archie, uh, Frankie have got it got it right. Yeah, he's got king c7 actually. And just kind of, this is a good uh, rule of thumb that whenever you're dealing with a minor piece, you kind of want to put your king on the opposite kind of collar to that piece, right? Just to make sure there's no checks. It's always a clever idea. So in this case, we put the king opposite collar to the knight. If it was a bishop, you can kind of do the same sort of logic. Um, and this ensures that black has no, no tricks. If we make a move of our bishop, like let's say we're just playing some move like uh, bishop g2, for example, then this allows this nice little trick, knight g6 check, king c7, and knight e8 check. Mm -hmm. It's a good defensive resource, right? Because he still mm -hmm. can't take. Yeah, and if king here, then the king gets, if the king gets in front of the pawn, mm -hmm. game over, yeah. And you, yeah, so it's not good. Um, so some of you have suggested other moves as well, like uh, bishop h5, but I guess I can use the same trick. Knight check, king here. Okay, I can't go knight e8, but I could go knight b5. It should be a similar thing, yeah. So uh, if king here, I can even technically just go king king d8 once I'm in front of the pawn. Yeah, you got no chance. Um, another one was knight bishop d5. Again, I'll probably do the same trick, mm -hmm. and then I can do this knight uh, e8 business. Okay, so that's why king c7 is the correct move. So now knight uh, here is obviously not working. Who's queen? So nice to go to d8, basically. Black's already kind of close to Zugzwang. And now the bishop d5 move makes a lot of sense, right? Remember, guys, this is how you dominate tonight. Bishop like this. And the knight has no squares. So white wins. Cool. Oh, I gave it away. I put an exercise in here because I thought, okay, uh, how to exploit white's last move. But okay, it should be pretty obvious. So black to play. Why is, why is white's last move a mistake? Charlie says he has terrible board vision. So what you need to do, Charlie, is go on the coordinate drills. You've got ones on chess.com, you've got ones on new chess. You go on somewhere over here and uh, see if you can beat my high score. <laughs> what is your high score in the coordinates game? 50. Oh, that's high. Alex has got something like that once. I can't remember what I haven't done it for ages. Well, I've only done it like twice, I think. So. Okay. Are you, uh, are you one of people that's addicted to um, the new chess um, challenge? Uh, I do. No, I don't. I don't do the corns one so much. I do the uh, puzzle storm probably more. Yeah, that's what I mean. The puzzle storm. Yeah. What's your highest score on that? Seventy six. Oh, that's very good. I think Gormani put out the other day and got like eighty. See, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> no, so it seems like someone's got a higher score than me. Then I'll go back and try and get higher. But <laughs> but now seventy six, I thought was pretty pretty like mostly like higher than uh, most people I know. So no, it is that's probably that's good that's for the time being. I don't know. Gormani, I think he plays it twenty four seven. 
<laughs> oh yeah, he'll be he'll be there all day. I've got I've got uh, I've got, I've got too many students to teach. I can't I can't play. Yeah, yeah. Good student. I don't know. Um, <laughs> okay, sorry, back to this. Just trying to take you. All right, so you've all got it. Yep, just so just check on d6, king c7, and just yeah, not yet check. Yeah, it's the same thing we just looked at. So uh, nice way to make the draw. Okay, um, this one was just to show kind of um, so color bishops, and that remember that black has kind of got his bishop on the wrong. Uh, it's got the wrong setup, right? He needs a king kind of on f8 and the bishop on d8. Um, but the issue actually has here is that the pawns are kind of already too far forward. And so there's always got this concept of Zug's wing. Ideally, you need the position a little bit further back. So black has some breathing room. So when the bishop can um, just keep moving back and forth. So here, uh, because he has less space, white should be able to win fairly easily. So bishop checking f8 and then just bring the king around like this and eventually then uh, e7. So, so just to show you the guys that uh, opposite color bishops is not always a draw contrary to uh, what many believe. Okay, so this one exercise then for you guys to try, white to play and win. How can you beat black here? And then we'll have a look at some model games, starting with Fisher Timonoff, probably one of my favorite minor PC games. <laughs> oh, how did he get in there? <laughs> What's he doing in there? He's not he's not an endgame player, he's a I'm a hacker. He's on power with Fisher. There we go, it's good. <laughs> Okay, right, I'm better not talk. I'm thinking they're ready to give it. It's harsh. Oof, F7. Please don't play F7, Dylan. Oh. Remember, if you've got opposite colour bishops, your bishop wants to stand the lights on, as of, has to stand light squares, right? And so the pawns want to be an opposite colour to your bishop. If you go both set on light squares, you'll have a dark square blockade and you'll never be able to make any progress. So you need to really get like this pawn on the dark square, really. Um, Okay, where's my time gone? We've got seven seconds. We've got a move from Krish. We've got an idea from Ryan, Charlie, Charlie and Frankie. Okay. Um, so basically, they just wait to move, I think, would work here, yeah? Bishop, bishop somewhere, king f5. Both look uh, fine to me. So yeah, it, anyone said those sorts of things is uh, yeah, correct. Um, I put king f5 just because I thought, you know, why not? Uh, it's nice just technique because you, you also avoid the, the check. Technically, if you move the bishop, I guess they can be a little bit more annoying, but you give one check and then go back. And so that's a little, it takes a bit longer. Um, so I just put, yeah, king f5, and now it's just uh, complete zugs wang. Black has simply no moves. All right, here we go. The model game, Fischer against Taimonov. Um, so what Fischer was renowned for his play with the bishop. He used to love bishops over knights. And so he used to love going to end games. We had like, you know, I think his favorite end game was Bishop and Rook against Rook and Knight. Um, and here's Kate, basically those guys who's got exchanged, those Rooks on the D file and who's got, got taken. And so Fisher's first move here was to go King to D3. So what do you guys think about the sort of position? Like what should be your, like the main main idea? Like, do you, do you think you should have your pawns like this on the opposite color to your Bishop or should you have the pawns on the same color as your Bishop? Yeah, tell us in the chat or you can raise your hand. Same color, opposite color. Basically. It sounds like a spaceship. Huh? <laughs> it's supposed to have a the video graphics card. What's going on? <laughs> uh, it's a problem of like you know Windows technology. You need like uh, Apple, but Apple's no good because I can't do my. Uh, Chest yeah. stuff on it. Yeah, it's annoying. Appreciate the value of chess. Isn't it? I, I wish I just have chess space for Mac and then I could just switch over to Apple permanently. Um, what graphics card? Well, I don't know. Just I don't know. I just know it's a Nvidia graphic gaming card thing. <laughs> That's about the extent of my knowledge, though. Um, yeah. So yeah, basically, we want our pawns on the opposite color to our bishop, which might seem a bit strange because it means the bishop can never protect those pawns. Um, but actually, it's good because it means our bishop is not, uh, its mobility is not restricted as a result. So this is a good technique so far by Fisher, uh, which is probably why he's happy to even trade into this, uh, into this end game in the first place. Now, it looks like black is going to have a fortress because you can kind of just sit and it's difficult for Fisher to make progress. That is true. This is why this concept of Zug's Wang is such an important one, because in positions where it's difficult to, to win, um, if you can put them in a Zug's Wang, 
and force them to make a, a move, then uh, it could often break their break their fortress. So it's a pretty instructive game. So we'll, we'll see what happens. So uh, Black played knight to e7. Fisher went bishop to e8 just to kind of keep this knight tied down for the time being. King to d5, denying the king entry into the into the position. So bishop um, f5 uh, f7 check, forcing the king back. King d6, king c4. And again, trying to make progress with the king, and king to uh, c6 was played. Okay, so bishop e8 check. Again, he's trying to get the king involved. King to b7, and finally gets king to b5. So it looks like Fisher's slowly making some progress. But after knight c8, he has to be always switched on. It's a nice little trick by timing off. Because now if you take that pawn, whoops, maybe a bit embarrassing, probably more embarrassing than the, uh, the, the bishop and knight uh, checkmate. Thing. So bishop c6 check. Got to uh, yeah, give your king some, some breathing room. Um, Okay, let's check here. Yeah, so time of one king to c7, uh, bishop to d5. So now if he gives a check, king, king a6 is uh, is fine. Is this position technically a clear draw? Um, I don't think so. I think this is probably a good uh, model game, actually. Technically, you can't know for certain because uh, you need something called a table base. And the table base only works if there's um, under seven pieces for both sides on the board. And so because we've got more than that, it's like difficult. You have to lose the engine, and sometimes the engines don't always uh, answer voice is useful in, in, in the end game. Um, so I think this, this game kind of shows you that probably it should be a win because these are really two very strong crown masters. Um, so I think it was if Black could draw, probably he would have found the way. Um, bishop d5, knight e7, bishop to f7, king to b7. And again, it's very tricky for, for white. He has to try and find a way to. Uh, to make progress and at the moment black has a very good setup king on b7 knight on e7 very hard to wait to make progress and so fisher now finds a clever way to uh basically waste a move he brings the bishop all the way back to b3 king to a7 push it back to d1 king to b7 push f3 check and now he feels like he's making some progress because um if the king goes to a7 he would have simply wasted a move of his bishop and black is then struggling to find uh kind of a move there so in the game, we went king to c7 instead. Um, okay, bishop king to a6. So finally, king manages to get to a6 square. Knight to g8, bishop d5, knight to e7, bishop c4. So again, he's wasted, wasted to move. Knight c6, now bishop f7, knight to e, e7, and bishop to e8. So finally, he's got the zugzwang. So it took him a while, but it's nice little maneuvering. Uh, just goes to show why you shouldn't just uh, you know, easily give your opponent a draw. If you've know you've got the stronger minor piece, the bishop for the knight, um, you should just kind of keep playing and finding ways to just maneuver your bishop around. Eventually, you get the zugzwang, and you slowly get you know closer and closer. You know, king's more active, and because your king's now at a6, black can't now shuffle with his king. Right, his king has no squares, knight has no squares, and all of a sudden, black's in big trouble. If he goes c4, then yeah, bishop can come back to f7 and just round up that pawn. So that also doesn't really doesn't really help. Um, and so instead, time was decided to go king to d8, which seems like a sensible move. Okay, so white to play. Let's see if you guys can play like the world champion. How would you convert this endgame advantage? Oh, look at that, Sarah. We've got even a chapter on Branadum against Carlson. You did more <laughs> the first part. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm excited. And that's the best chapter of them all. What? Um, what? Oh, no. I was going to say, I'm um, right. I don't think I want to much straight away. But we'll obviously think about post, post work if you want to do a bit more or re look at these positions because they are quite complicated and it's always good to have them as a reference. I always find like these key positions, it's worth revising every few months just to make sure you mm -hmm. remember the key themes. It's hard work for sure, but think about it this way. Would you rather do the hard work now in the comfort of your own home or when you're in a very like must win situation in a you know high level top like game like the terror final for example and you need to win to to, to you know to win the whole thing. Yeah who's so, gonna win the terror final this year? We're having an over the board terror final which I'm so excited about. I'll do it. Can I play? Well you're a bit old but you did win it back in the day. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm not that old. If I miss, technically I missed two years because I moved to America. So 
I had two years, like I, I, I reserved. Yeah, but you're over 18. Frozen time. Okay. Would be That's cheap. fine, but like, they actually do that in America, you know, for sports over there. If you miss like what, some of your years in school, you can still play um, sports. You might have deliberately missed two years. <laughs> So yeah, so it's weird. It's anyway. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got some ideas. Most people wanted to sack the bishop, I assume, over here. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the correct answer. Bishop f7 actually doesn't really make any progress because king just goes back to c7, and then we're, yeah, struggling to do anything. So now, this is also an important point. Not only do you need to do Zugzwang, but you need to also find the right moment to um, to sacrifice a tra like transformation of advantage. So you just go, bishop takes g6, knight g6, king takes b6, um, and of course, fishers happen to do this because knights are, you know, pretty bad at defending against past pawns. Um, okay, so something happened here. King b6, king d7 was played. King takes c5. That goes back to e7. And here, Fisher was making sure he wasn't too greedy, right? You don't need to go after this guy and try to take him as well because you know, one thing you can defend. And so he's going b4. Just needs to make this some past pawns, uh, which again is a very crucial um, principle of the end game. Two main things: in the end game activity and Create past ones. The two main principles you should always try to be um, using. So takes, takes, knight c8, and the game finishing a few more moves. a5, knight to d6, b5, knight d4 check. So Fisher doesn't even care about that pawn. Bishop, uh, king to b6, king to c8, king to c6, king to b8, b6, and uh, black had to uh, resign here. So why did he resign? Well, I guess if he takes the pawn, but he's going to march this guy up the board. And if he tries to go after this guy, we can just give a check here, check here, king here, and then just uh, get our queen. So, um, yeah, white wins. OK. Next one, we have some game. Actually, this is interesting. I played this the other day uh, in a, was it maybe a rapid play game? This guy I'm playing against was like 23.50, so you know, pretty, pretty good. Um, and I'm playing black. So I've got this like opposite color bishops and looks like I should be winning. And technically I am winning, but I actually made a, 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 a blunder on my next move. Yeah. Uh, luckily he didn't exploit it. But, <laughs> so, and the first question is um, black to play. Actually, I, I didn't, I wasn't really low on time. I was just lazy. Sometimes the problem I have when I'm playing, I have two, I have two screens. And so sometimes I'm like watching like Netflix at the same time as I'm playing, which is why. That is not good. It's not good. Don't, don't do it. Don't do what I do. Bad, bad Brandon. And yeah. This is why I need over the board tournaments so I can, uh, you know, yeah. not be going to be back over the board chats and it's going to yeah, be more fun than ever. Listen to music on Spotify. I'm doing, you know, <laughs> it's terrible. Okay, so uh, black to play. What's the, what do you think that is the correct move then? I haven't seen this actually, so I'm going to have to think about it as well. There you go, see if Sarah can find a okay. better move than what I played in the game. Easy to find better moves than your move. <laughs> Well, my move is just a lazy move. It's just like one of those moves which is like autopilot. We think, oh, yeah, that looks good. It's a safe, you know, don't block or anything type move. And <laughs> that's, that's actually just oh, that's so stupid. Well, I was going to say it's so stupid just in case someone suggests it. Whoops. Imagine bullet over the board. Yeah, I played bullet over the board. It's, it's horrendous. What? Just pieces fly everywhere. Yeah. It's Actually, awful. I remember at the World Championship match when we went to New York. I remember watching what's he called? This uh, grandmaster playing one minute chess in the like in the VIP lounge, and it was so funny because it'd been so noisy. He got told off it was going to disturb the match. Yeah, I don't. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, not a hundred percent sure about the time control for the UK chess challenge yet. We're almost finish sorting everything out. We just need to check on a few venues and things. We're hoping to, um, it was 12 seconds out, Charlie. Pawns going up the board, guys. I can't go B6. Um, yeah, I don't even know the answer to this, but I know what I would play. I have no idea really. So, okay, so what I played, I played King B3 basically. And I, the reason I play King B3 is because you know what I remember I said earlier, where you want to kind of put your king on the opposite color to the bishop. So I thought it was just like a good strategic idea. I put a king here, I put a bishop here, and I just advanced the pawns and thought it should be easily winning, right? And so I didn't really pay much attention to this position, which is why in the end game, it's another very key principle where there's this advice where you should, you should um, try not to rush. Because if you if you rush and you, you could easily end up messing up your position. So the correct solution was actually just to go b4. Oh, cool. Why is that to king c1? 
b3, bishop f6, king a2. This is, this is imperative. In this way, you ensure that black can't, uh, sorry, white can't get any sort of uh, fortress set up. King b3, I allow him to, um, yeah, have some chances to, to hold now because um, I, think, I think he's supposed to go like bishop d8 or something here. But anyway, in, in the game, he went king c1, bishop b4, bishop d8, a4, bishop e7, a3, bishop f6. So technically, um, this is now a draw, I believe, because if I now try to do the king a2 stuff and try to move the pawn, he can just put the, keep the bishop on like e7, and my pawn can't advance forward, right? So that's the, uh, that's the issue. So in the game, I went uh, pawn to b4, and this brings about another very critical position. So now it's white to play. Let's see if you guys can find the move that he didn't manage to find that would have made uh, a draw. Can you guys draw against Brandon? Come on. Oh dear. <laughs> can you? Uh, the funny thing is, when I was playing this game, I didn't even notice it was a draw. Like, it was only when I looked at it afterwards and I saw like uh, make all these inaccuracies. I was like, where? Was like, you made it, you made this okay. inaccuracy and that blunder and this one. I was like, okay. Probably should uh, turn the TP off. <laughs> Luckily, he didn't find the move, and so I managed to win the game. All right, Ryan's got it. Well Ryan's, Ryan's drawn against me. <laughs> Bother. Dylan's got it. Charlie's got it. Archie's got it. Oh, my goodness. That's a, lot of e that's a lot of ELO points I'm losing here. Yeah, well done, Charlie. Oof, yeah. Frankie's got it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Chris is... Yeah, you've all got it. You've all got it. I've got it as well. Say goodbye to our rating. I'm going to be under 2,000 at this rate. <laughs> I'm going to be like... Okay, so uh, I played, he played bishop e5, which is a big mistake because now I can go king a2. And now, of course, I just launched one forward and it's completely lost. So he missed his chance. Had he gone bishop to e7, I'm busted. <laughs> there's, no, there's no way to actually win this position anymore because I can't move my king to a2. And if I go pawn to a2, then he simply goes back and stays on his diagonal forever and I can't do anything. Right, so uh, yeah. Maybe we can criticize him. He was 2350 at the end of the day. So the fact he didn't manage to draw this was uh, quite funny too. Mm -hmm. All right. So next example, same, the same, same opponent, but at least this is a better technique from my perspective. So what we have here is I'm a pawn up, right? And so whenever you're a pawn up, all you need to do is just simple chess, right? Just kind of liquidate towards the, towards the end game. You shouldn't be afraid to go towards the end game. I've seen a lot of like uh, students of mine that are always a little bit reluctant. They think, oh, if they're only a pawn up, they can't possibly win just one pawn. No, I played some German FM the other day. That's all I did. I won one pawn, swapped everything off, and won the king of pawn end game. Might sound boring, but I don't have to risk losing, you know? So yeah. it's just, it was very easy. Um, Frankie's got a question in the previous position, which it takes b4 and then king takes b4 and then king b2 works as well. I, I think it does, but I can't see the position, but I think he might be right now. So instead, so instead or after bishop b7, bishop b7, a2, and then bishop takes b4, I can queen, yeah? a1. That's true. <laughs> so you're saying here, uh, bishop b7, a2, if you take on b4 and takes king, here would be a draw, yeah? But if I go uh, okay. queen, that's pretty strong. It's all right. You have, bishop, you have to go bishop f6. You can't, get, you can't let me get a queen, Frankie. You know, I'd be happy if you do that because it means my rating won't get hammered as much. But anyway, this position, white to play. Um, first question I think is quite straightforward. So maybe we'll skip this one. Um, always want to kind of improve pieces all the time. Always improve pieces. So my knight at the moment looks a bit, a bit silly. So easy to bring him back into the game. So I think uh, knight t3 is not such a difficult move to spot. Knight c7, knight c5, attacking a pawn, why not? And this is just this generally a good concept that whether you're in these sorts of end games, if you can kind of provoke their pawns further forward, um, usually the weaker they become. So by pushing them forward like this, that actually helps your position at 2 6 And already he's very close to, to being lost uh, completely because his pieces are kind of overloaded. Knight e6 is like an early move. And this is a position I think would be, uh, yeah, it's, it's an important one. So wide to play. How did I finish him off? Basically after my next move, he resigned. So let's see if you guys can find it. Okay, Chris has got it. He's a tactical wizard. <laughs> Charlie, I remember hitting 200 age about four. <laughs> what? Oh, I mean, it's like FIDE, I think. I've always like, meant ECF. I was like, Plant. I did as well. <laughs> 200 ECF at age four. 
Uh, Chess.com. Okay. What was your first FIDA rating, Sarah? Uh, hmm, I don't know. Oh, maybe it was like 1800 or something, because they used yeah. to like, not let you have a rating in, because I know they moved it down to like whatever, but I think the, the lowest was 1800, so I think it was like 1850 or something. Yeah, I think mine was 1888. Um, so I've never been around this like 1000 mark. No, because it was never a thing when, well, I'm older than you, but when I was younger, you couldn't actually get a lower feeding. And, and I think a few years before, um, you couldn't come in unless you were 2000. Okay. The worst part is actually just as I got my feeder rating, like a few days later, they introduced this uh, K factor of 40 rule. And so people like, you know, Ravi Harry just ends up with great, which is storming. It went to like 2400, like so quickly. And Akshay had the same thing as well. Oh, yeah. Both like 23, 2400. I was thinking, what's going on here? Yeah. Because yeah, there's K factors of 40. It's ridiculous. They were like, yo yo, it's not going up. Yeah. And here I am sitting my 1800 rating with K factor of 20 and having to like just slowly and painfully get it all the way up. I was just like, oh, torture. Um, okay, so it looks like only Krish has got it so far. Okay, so basically what you have to do here is always look for, you know, look for um, overloaded pieces. And if you do that, you can kind of maybe work backwards. This is always what strong players are doing. So they first would notice that the knight is um, kind of overload defending the bishop, right? And so we'd want to look for a way to deflect the knight. But if you deflect the knights, well, he can just take. So then we go, okay, well, he's to deflect the pawn. I want to think about, well, that way, then he's like, okay, b5 is not such a hard move to see. The point is, if he takes d5, black has to lose a piece. Game over, right? So we don't need to do any of this kind of, um, you know, trading and bishop b8 type stuff. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad move, but it's just like, uh, of course, b5 is just far stronger, isn't it? Okay, um, next position. Again, this is based on minor, I, I put this one in because it's based on the minor piece of configuration. So if you have a good understanding of that, you should know kind of what to do in these sorts of situations. So white to play, um, we have a 50-50. We do take back with the queen or the bishop. So which one do you think is better? <laughs> yeah, as a question, what's the K factor? It's the number that you multiply your, uh, your I don't know what tournament score by uh, to work out your increase or decrease in feed area rating. Maybe. Yeah, so basically the higher your K factor, the easier it is to gain points. Also, also the easier it is to lose points too. So, yeah, so they put the factor high for juniors because juniors are so unpredictable yeah. and they came in with really low rating. So yeah. Um, so most people's K factor tends to be 20, but when you get when you cross 2400, then it becomes 10 for the rest of your life, which is really, really dull. Honestly, guys, don't, go, go, don't get to 2400. It's not pleasant. No, it's, good. it's not good. It's not good. Like you'll, you'll beat someone and you get like 0 0.7 points. Yeah, but at least when you lose. It's horrible. You don't lose as many. That's true. But to be honest, my style of play, I tend to, I, I'd, I'd rather do it more like with a K factor 20, I think. Um, I hate gaining 0 0.7. So depressing. Yeah, correct. You have to use it after grade as well. Because the game could be like three hours long and then also you just gain 0 0.7. Think, well, not really worth it. <laughs> um... I'm probably distracting everyone. All right, we've got some answers. Queen d5, perfect. So it's all about understanding, basically. We have the bishop pair advantage, and so we have to understand about these guys is they are not dependent on the queen whatsoever, right? The queen is actually better with the knight because the knight offers a range of movement that she doesn't have herself, right? And so if you have a bishop pair advantage, you need to kind of trade the queens off. Otherwise, they're going to have a queen and knight advantage. And also, I feel like our king is a little bit weaker than, than their king. Their king can easily hide in the corner, whereas our king's always kind of in danger of this bishop, right? So that we should definitely want to trade the queens. So queen d5 check, king h8, queen takes d8. You went rook uh, f takes d8 for some reason. Okay, I swapped everything off and then just took on b7. So this is uh, always, you know, what you need to do. Whenever you win material, just go for these end games. Swap everything off and just win the end game easily. You just, you take no risks of, uh, of losing. And it's quite a pleasant way to, you know, to play the game. So I'll flick through the next few moves quite quickly. Yeah. I'll bring out time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, swap the rooks off as well. And uh, now it's just very, basically very easy. Just take all his pawns, saying thank you very much. Shopping at Waitrose, take all his pawns. And uh, yeah, I was a very hungry caterpillar and won every pawn, all his pawns, and then decided to resign. So easy, right? Didn't have to do anything. You know, just swap, swap all the pieces off, take all his pawns, and push, push Ari up the board. And uh, no problem. Easy game. That was really um, I think we're out of time now. 
that's sure. that's very instructive. So um, we'll share with you um, some more positions if you want to have another look at a bit more or go through something we've discussed. Yeah. So what I did is I just put it in here. So you guys, you'll get sent this study and if you go on the homework section, you can click on the link. There's a link on the side. You can't see my screen at the moment. You click on the link and it'll take you to 16 puzzles you can try all based on um, night endings. Oh, wow. So you can have a, have a go at those. It's all interactive as well. So you can see if you get it right straight away. Oh, with the so, yeah, some, some of them are already, um, we might have already seen, but yeah, a lot of them are, you can just you know, practice your skills. Yeah, I was useful to do that any, any time as well. Um, okay, well, thanks everyone for joining. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, we'll see you again soon, hopefully. <laughs>